Hi again everyone. In this video I'm going to show you a proof of the first derivative test from a course in multivariable calculus. Now this video is a little bit different in the sense that it involves a proof. In other videos I've shown you lots of applications of the first derivative test and the second derivative test. But uh, a good question here is why, why does the uh, first derivative test work? Well, before we get to that, let's actually uh, review the first derivative test. So suppose I've got a function of two variables and it has either a local maximum or a local minimum value at some interior point a comma b of its domain. If the first derivatives of f exist at that point, then the partial derivatives at the point a comma b are both equal to zero. Okay, now let's deconstruct that a little bit more. First of all, by local maximum, we mean that f of a b is greater than or equal to all the other values of f near the point a comma b. And by local minimum, we mean the value of f at a b, f a b, is less than or equal to all the other values nearby to the point a comma b. Okay, now we speak of an interior point uh, of its domain. This means a, a point that's not on the boundary. Now, say if f is a polynomial, um, then then you don't need to worry about this. Okay, now it's just so the uh, partial derivatives are all well defined. Okay, if the partial if the first order partial derivatives of f at that point exist, then these two partial derivatives are zero. So let's see if we can prove it and um, uh, see, see how it works. Now, the first derivative test, of course, is a very important component in locating the critical points of a function. Um, now, there's also a second derivative test which enables you to classify uh, these critical points. Do they lead to local max, local min, or uh, a saddle point, like a point of inflection? Okay, so I'm going to prove the first case. And I'm going to leave the other case for you to do. Okay. All right, well, let's think about this partial derivative here. Now, it's a partial derivative with respect to x. So when we differentiate a function with respect to x, we imagine all the y's are constant and we, we vary x and look at a, a special limit. Now, let I'm going to introduce the following function. Essentially, I'm going to let our function be fixed in the second variable. And this makes it, makes it then a function of one variable. Okay, so this is basically just a function of one variable. And in fact, um, we're going to come up with this just using this function here and, and the limits of a regular derivative for a function of one variable. Okay, so what we're going to do is show that this is the case. So this is then equivalent to showing this. So how do we do it? Well, let's have a look in... Um, in the plane y equals b, now here I've just, I'm going to draw the view. So imagine, uh, imagine the positive y-axis is coming out of the screen at you, at you, and b, say, is positive, okay, and a is positive. So this, although it looks a bit ba backwards, this is the positive o-x axis, the positive o-z axis. Okay, and our graph might look something like that. Okay. All right, well, you can see here that our function g has a local maximum at that point. Okay, so you can see for all other points close to a, g of a is greater than or equal to g of x for all x points close to a. So this is, this is basically, this picture is set in the plane y equals uh, b. Okay, so it's like a, a slice in, involving the plane y equals b. 
Okay. So we see from our picture, now I'm just discussing the case of a local maximum, if you, local minimum, you, you would just sort of reverse the inequalities that I'm going to have. So g of a is greater than or equal to g of x for all x near to a. Now I haven't made that precise, but um, um, I, I think that's uh, reasonably clear what I mean, okay? Alright, so, well, what about when x is near to a and, and uh, to the right of a and near to a to the left of a? Well, we, let's discuss that case now. So for x greater than a, we have the following, okay? We want to somehow end up with this. So remember the regular derivative is just the limit of a special quotient. So let's form the following quotient. And for x greater than a, the bottom bit's positive. And this is going to be from this is this is going to be less than or equal to zero. So this quotient then is going to be less than or equal to zero. And for x to the left of a we have, okay, well let's look at the same quotient again. Okay, so the bottom bit now is going to be negative and the top is going to be less than or equal to zero. So we're going to get the following. Okay. So if we combine these inequalities, um, we can come up with the following. Well, if I take, say, a right-hand limit in here, I know the right-hand limit as x approaches a is going to be less than or equal to zero. The left-hand limit in here as x approaches a from the left is going to be greater than or equal to zero. But I know because the partial derivatives of f exist at this point that g prime of a must exist. So these two limits, the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, must be equal. Okay, so now remember the def definition of a, of a derivative of functions of one variable. This is just g dash of a, and I know that if something's greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to zero, the the thing in the middle must be zero. So we've shown this, which is equivalent to showing this. Okay, so that's the case that I'm, I'm going to discuss. Now if we had a, a minimum here, then you would basically just reverse this inequality and, and uh, proceed in a very similar fashion. Um, to prove this one, I'll leave that for you to do. So your, your diagram would be slightly different here, um, but essentially that the proof follows by very similar methods. So that's why the first derivative test works. Uh, and like I said before, it's very powerful in locating critical points. And then um, a second derivative test can be used for classifying those critical points.